Everybody, it's Jake here, and uh, just want to say, hey, you know, we've been doing these times of devotion, these times of encouragement, and I'm here uh, with another. Uh, again, if you don't recognize me, um, that is because I shaved my quarantine beard. You know, they're saying that if you want to get your masks to fit properly, you actually uh, you need to get a full seal around this part. You got to shave all this stuff off. So it was a tragic moment, uh, but I made peace with it and I uh, you know kind of kind of did some trimming so again if you don't recognize me it's Jake um, and also too you'll notice that I'm stationary right now that I'm not walking around like Pastor James has been um, and again uh, if you didn't see some of the earlier videos that we put out I have had some mishaps when it comes to walking around with my phone um, so here I am staying put because it just feels like it's gonna be uh, safer and better for all of us, myself and my iPhone. Again, it's not a good time to break your iPhone because I don't think the I, Apple stores are open to do any work on them. So anyway, all that aside, business aside, um, I just want to reach out and uh, continue this new form of community that we're finding in these unprecedented times. You know, uh, church community is such a valuable and vital thing and especially when it comes to unprecedented life situations um, for me i've experienced 
um, just uh, you know being a, a little bit of a younger guy every I feel like every year I'm in an unprecedented life situation because as I get older I just every every new stage of life feels like completely different than the last and so I rely on community to help me uh, understand it you know when I was uh, in my teenage years a lot of people told me your 20s are going to be a really just interesting time. You're going to be figuring yourself out and it's going to be uh, filled with a lot of emotional highs and lows. And I said, okay, Boomer, I, you know, I don't know what that means. Um, sure, I get it. But then I fully, couldn't fully understand it until I was here. Now I'm in my mid to starting to be on my later 20s and it's like, okay, I totally get what they were talking about, but how helpful it was to actually experience that in community, not isolated. I'm sure the same is true. For those of you who have kids, you know, people could have explained it to you over and over again, but none of it really fully makes sense until you're there in the moment with your own experience. And certainly having community alongside you is what's most important, right? So here we are in another unprecedented life experience, one that none of us could have planned for, none, something that none of us could have really foreseen. And so, Look at the importance that having any kind of community is in these times, you know, whether it's just being able to, uh, you know, text friends, call friends, FaceTime. I mean, I've been FaceTiming and Zooming uh, more than I ever have. And it's actually really a rewarding thing because, it, you know, it shows that people more than ever crave interaction, crave relationship. And so that's been really valuable to see. And so today, um, I just want to encourage you, we're, again, in a time that is a brand new experience, and I've been really drawn uh, to see how the scriptures really give us a picture and an outline of how the human experience is understood. It's captured in the scriptures, and we have a sense that all these different emotions that you might be feeling being in quarantine, that you might be feeling just being confronted with a big shift, these are all things that we see in scripture as understandable, as part of what it means to be human. And I was specifically drawn to a very popular uh, Bible verse. It's essentially the first part of Ecclesiastes chapter three. You're gonna recognize this most likely, and I'm just gonna go through all of it. Uh, and again, just when you hear these words, kind of put your own situation, put your own spin on it, and think like, how am I experiencing some of these feelings? For uh, everything, there is a season. A time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to go outside and a time to be in quarantine, right? A time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. I don't do either of those things much, but I can imagine that if there was a time in history where scattering stones was a, a common activity, that you'd also need to tell people to stop gathering stones, so whatever. Time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search. Yeah, I guess, I guess if someone uh, says they have coronavirus, don't embrace them, turn them away. Um, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away. And that's just a little one out there for all you hoarders. There is a time to throw away and it's now. Um, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak. One that I've had to learn personally, right? Because I uh, can just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and it's important for me to be quiet and to listen. Uh, and a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Now it might be interesting for you to hear all those because there are certainly some of those categories that are interesting, that they don't necessarily feel like, is there ever going to be a time to hate? You know, it's a, weird, it's a weird one to throw in there, but I think if you were to take this piece of scripture as a whole, really look at it as a whole, we're being illustrated a picture of the human experience. You know, this comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, and that book is really Solomon, the richest man, uh, you know, at the time kind of known to be the richest person in the world and the smartest person in the world. Uh, and he's, he's this, in this whole book, he's really going through this question of like, what does it mean 
uh, to be alive, to be human, to be um, chosen by God, a child of God. How, what does it mean to be on this planet? You know, and, and asking these really big questions. And so we come to this verse that really paints a picture of the big uh, spread, the dynamic range of what it means to be human. And when I look at this, it really makes me think of music. And, uh, you know, for those of you that don't know, I, I am a musician. I also uh, lead worship at our church. And dynamics are a term that come up a lot in music, specifically if I was going to lead a worship set. It's something that I would uh, encourage my band to have dynamics. And what that basically means is uh, the dynamic range in regards to music is really the louder that you're or sorry, the quieter that your quiet moments in a song are, the more impact that the loud moments will have. It's kind of like if you were to see those those frequency uh, little bars, and uh, or you were kind of see something or like something like this, you know, like my tattoo, you know, it's like the 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 for for you to really create a full, big, emotional. Um, wide, expansive feeling song, you want your quiet moments to feel quiet and your big moments to feel big so that the full range of sound is encapsulated in the song. So uh, that even actually translates further though, um, when planning worship sets, something that we always uh, bring into account is this idea of our songs also having a bit of dynamic range in the sense that, you know, on a given Sunday, you've, you've, if you've been uh, to one of our services, you'll see that our worship sets have probably some fast songs, some kind of medium songs, and some really slow, more intense emotional songs. The fast songs are, are kind of more upbeat, more celebratory, and then the slow songs are more intense and deep and really uh, reflecting on life, reflecting on God, reflecting on these big um, ideas and really kind of creating this moment between you and God. And I've found that if you were just to have fast, upbeat, dancey, celebratory songs and none of the slow songs, a person might be left wanting to express emotions, wanting to have a moment with God that they don't feel like they were able to have because there wasn't any room for, for some depth, for some, some sadness, some, some uh, heavier emotions. But yet if we were only to play those really heavy, slow, kind of deeper songs, someone might be left wanting to uh, celebrate and rejoice and be thankful and dance. And so we do both. We try to create a bit of a rhythm, a bit of an arc within a worship set because you want the full human experience. And just as a side note, it's one of my favorite things uh, to, to lead worship and to see that within a given 20 or 30 minute worship set that we were all together able to experience a full wide range of emotions, joy, uh, happiness, celebratory thanksgiving and then also some of that deeper deeper stuff even even it's okay to feel sadness in those moments um, because you're you're uh, having an experience of authenticity with god and so again when we're talking about dynamic range we're talking about the full wide range of the human experience and i found dynamics to be something that really um, happens to us in our lives. You know, it's like this verse is saying there's a time for all these things. There's a time for this and a time for that. And if you just have this, you don't even really appreciate this, right? I mean, I'll put it on a really basic level. I, uh, I, love, I love sweets, you know? But uh, if I have too many sweets, I need saltiness. I need something savory. I need like dinner. You know what I mean? I can't just eat sweets all day. But when, I'm, when I've had enough savory and salty things, I go back to sweets. And I'm on this constant flip-flop between sweet and salty. This is my life, you know. Um, another, another kind of example that I have is um, when you don't have a dynamic range, um, you know, when you don't have space for both of these things, uh, you, you kind of end up in an interesting place. For example, I grew up in Southern California, so all I ever knew was one season, which was summer. And the beginning of this verse in Ecclesiastes 3, it says, for everything there is a season. And uh, I didn't know every season growing up. I only knew summer. And I actually, I know this is gonna sound like blasphemy, I didn't like summer. Don't throw tomatoes at your iPhone or computer screen right now, because it's only gonna hurt your computer screen. So don't, you can't, you can't egg me right now. But it's the truth. 
I used to not like summer because it was all I knew because I didn't know the full range of the human experience and the full range of seasons and now that I've moved to Washington, the Pacific Northwest, and I've experienced four unique, distinct seasons, although some people would agree there's not exactly four, I, I think that there is, but um, now that I've experienced four distinct seasons, I really have an appreciation for each one, and specifically, I love summer now. I'm a summer person, I love it. Um, side note, my birthday's in summer, and I'm surprised that it took me 26 years or 25 years to, to like summer. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, you know, if we don't have the full range of experiences in life, then we lose appreciation for the other experiences. If, if we only know happiness, then we don't have space to feel those heavy emotions of sadness in our life. And I think for a lot of us, what quarantine has done is it's forced us to kind of be with ourselves, to confront emotions, to confront feelings um, that are within the full range of the human experience that maybe we don't often give ourselves space to actually feel. You know, you wanna, you wanna kind of put your own spin on this first. Yeah, there, there's a time to be bummed out because you've, we've been in quarantine for a certain amount of time and it, we're just over it. There's a time to be stressed because you don't know what the future hold. There's a time to be lonely. There's a time to feel restless and anxious. And I'm not saying that we want to live there and stay there forever, but I'm telling you that it is in scripture that it is part of the human experience to have those feelings. And so I want to tell you, and I'm telling myself this, it's okay. It's okay. And in fact, sometimes more of the difficulty comes when we try to stuff those feelings away and we don't allow there to be a time to be sad or a time like it says to grieve a time to let go sometimes the more difficult moments and the more challenges arise when we actually don't allow ourselves just to feel that full range and so i want to encourage you you know if emotions are coming up for you and feelings are coming up for you anxieties that you uh, haven't felt in a long time or ever it's okay now yes reach out yes share them yes Find ways in prayer, in scripture, in connecting with other people to, to work on those things, to release those things. But just know it's not something that's outside of the human experience, something that's outside of what scripture even outlines as a part of our lives, you know? So when God uh, comes along and rescues the Hebrew people from slavery, rescues them out of Egypt. We're now going to Exodus. When we see that this happens, um, he gives them the Sabbath. And for a lot of us, we know the Sabbath as one day a week that uh, is meant to be done or used as a day of full rest, of no work. Um, and of course, none of us do a great job of fully keeping the Sabbath, right? But the Sabbath was given to the Hebrew people by God as a way of creating a rhythm of rest in their life. And at the time, they had been slaves for hundreds of years, and all they had known is work, 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 work. Their identity was only in what they produced. I got called again, okay? I need stop calling me, people. I'm sorry. I'll call you back. We have the Sabbath, a day of rest. And for a lot of us, you know, the idea of... Uh, a day that we're not in some way working is actually a foreign idea for us. And so um, now being in quarantine, maybe for the first time, has actually created some forced rest for you. You know, God actually, when we see in Exodus that the Sabbath comes about, it's really put in as a command and a command to keep the Sabbath day holy. And what I really take from that is that the Hebrew people at that time had such a difficulty knowing what it meant a lot to slow down, to not produce, and just to be, that he really, God made it explicitly clear that it was of vital importance that they observe the Sabbath day. And again, this time of quarantine is a time of force, kind of rest, of, of forcing us to slow down, of forcing a rhythm where maybe you didn't have as much of a rhythm in your life, as much of a dynamic, that there's work and there's rest. There's moments of joy and moments of activity and moments of uh, mellow, you know, being mellow and, and moments of, of resting. And 
And I've just found that, um, you know, in this time, it's, it's so different than what our normal lives look like that it makes me really think that this is an interesting picture of the full range of what life is. And we see with the Sabbath, we see in Ecclesiastes that, that part of the human experience is allowing ourselves to go to these places. And in that, we are centered, we are grounded. That if we're only living in work, then we're not going to have the balance that we need. If we're only, uh, you know, like, like the, the verse says, if we're only harvesting and we're not planting, eventually the ground is going to give up all it can give up, right? And so what I encourage you in this time and what I want you to take away and what I'm really encouraging myself to do and to take away from all this is, is that when emotions come up, when feelings come up, when challenges come up from this crisis that are new for you, that are difficult, that uh, are just things you haven't faced before, just know you're not alone and know that this is a, exactly a part of the human experience and maybe moving forward from this, that as we come out of quarantine eventually and we go into a new normal, that will also bring with it a sense of rhythm and dynamic, a sense of range that we didn't have before, that maybe we'll be a little more comfortable with some of the emotions that, have, that came up during this time. Maybe we will be a little more comfortable with resting and not just doing, doing, doing all the time. Maybe we'll actually have room in our hearts and in our lives for a bigger range of experiences and emotions than we ever thought possible. And we can take that with us. And so, again, reach out to those around you if you need help, but also just remember what you're feeling is okay. It's don't, you don't need to just ignore it. It's a part of this experience and you can give it to God. You can pray, you can use this time to really allow God to bring up things, work on things in you, in your family and build stronger bonds than you even had before. And so that's just my hope and my prayer for you that you'd experience that. Have a wonderful week.